Hello, hello, Kevin. Uh, is that Bob? Stu- Do I hear Bob Stewart? Hey, what are you doing? Hey, man, I'm here for a webinar. What about you? You are. Uh, I, I am. I, I'm going to do it then. Let's do it. Let's do a webinar. Let's hit it, man. I like it. Hey, everybody. Thanks for being here. All uh, everybody took the time out of their busy schedule. I know it is. It's not even. It's past the middle of December. I guess it's middle-ish. But like, let's face it. Christmas is next next week. We all have important things that we could be doing. Uh, and yet, a lot of us took took time out of our busy schedule today to be here because, um, you know, as I as as me. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Kevin Kaufman. I'm uh, one of the founders of the Next Level Agents Facebook group, where you definitely heard about this uh, webinar from. And w- one of our members was asking about Brivity last week, and then it created quite a quite a stir and quite a uh, string of comments and questions and whatnot. And so I reached out to Ben and said, Ben, can do you think we can get you guys to do maybe a uh, may, maybe do a webinar for us, just kind of show us what exactly is Brivity about because it's changed so much over the years. And so I, I know Ben's teaching today and he said he couldn't do it, but he asked uh, he asked Bob to do it for us because let's face it, Bob's the one that actually gets the stuff done anyways. Ben's ah, just, a, Kevin. Ben's just I, the guy I, that puts Ben's his name, name on face here. On things. Yeah, Ben's name is on here. It's probably the closest I'll ever be to being Ben Kinney is right here. But um, yeah, he's up doing what career visioning with 400 of our friends up in Simiamu here, not too far from where I'm sitting here in Bellingham. We're going to dive in here. I'm going to show you guys um, some of the features. Kevin, there's a lot inside of Brivity. Okay. I'm going to show you guys 10 of the features that Ben's team uses. Uh, And then I'm going to talk a little bit because if you come here today and you're like, yeah, you know what? At the end of the day, this isn't for me. I still want you to walk away from something that you might be able to go put into your business today. So I'll give you a few things that, that Ben's folks are doing inside of their business. And, and, you know, especially as it relates to, to brevity and how they're leveraging some of the aspects of, of what we've spent a lot of time and a lot of effort building over the last four years. And Kevin, when we, when Ben started building this, um, it wasn't, it, it, it was literally to work in his business, right? And, and he didn't, I don't, you know, Ben's kind of a forward thinker. So I'm sure at some point he was thinking, I'm going to build this and then, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll give access to it to other people. But initially this was something his team's used. And in fact, seven years ago when he first started Brivity, he built it as a transaction management software because he got to this place in his business where he said, look, the next deal that comes in the door, I can't, I can't like ensure that my client is going to get the same exact experience from me as I'm growing. Kevin, you guys are experiencing this this year, right? You said we've made some changes in our business, really nailed down some processes. And you know, like Ben, Ben says this all the time. He, he's really just an ordinary cable guy from Bellingham, Washington, right? But he's built this really amazing business. You guys can see kind of the output of that business on the screen right now. He's built this really amazing business on the back of systems and models. And so Brivity initially was just a system and model for the way that they managed the transaction, the way they communicated to their their buyers and their sellers. And over the last four years, we've really expanded it into something um, that you don't have to have a contract for. This slide's just kind of like, hey, look, we we wake up every day to win your business. We don't do contracts at Brivity. Um, This is what I want to get to. Like You guys, every one of you that's on this call today and took the time out of your day, you guys are doing this, these five things. Um, over and over and over again, day after day in your business, you know, week after week, month after month, year after year. Kevin, these look familiar, right? You're always out there trying to generate one more person into the database, generate one more buyer or seller. Um, if you're doing that, you know, in a really in our marketing world, right? We're all trying to capture that person somehow. And it's not even that could be at an open house. I'm trying to capture them or shoot somebody. I bump into them and Kevin, I don't know. Do you wear your realtor pin like when you go to the grocery store? You don't seem like that type to me, but you know, you might have a group 4610 real estate shirt on and somebody goes, oh, hey, how's the market, right? And I got to capture that person into my database and then eventually nurture these people. And, you know, you're, you guys all day long, every day are nurturing people that you have in your database that aren't ready to buy or sell when they entered that, that database, right? And then you have, ultimately, you like close that deal. You do that somewhere. Some of you guys do it on a spreadsheet or dot loop or wherever, and then you like repeat that whole process. And this whole thing is just a cycle we do over and over and over again. And what Ben, what happened one day is he woke up and he said, I'm doing this stuff. I'm doing it all over the place. I got five different places I log into, five different bills that I have. And so he just kind of set out to build something that he could really use 
to manage his business, and then to build those systems and models around his business, Kevin. So we'll show you 10 of the things that they're using in here today. Um, and really it's around this, this, these core kind of ways that Ben's team generates business. And I always, like when you put other on a pie, Kevin, then you've literally covered everything, right? So this is 100% of where his business comes from, and we can do that because we threw other on there. But really, the, the five that are named, right? Working our sphere and our past clients, doing open houses, prospecting. So like generally on the phone, but that could be mail prospecting, um, internet leads. Okay. Leads that we generate from our listings. Th those five buckets of business are something that every single agent could, and maybe even should be thinking about for their business, right? And I, they're probably not all thinking about all of those, but let's try not to shit on anybody today, Bob. Let's try yeah, not to okay. shit on anybody. No, no shoulds here. Okay. So you, but you could be, uh, these could be elements of your business. And Ben thinks about his business like a stool, right? So if any of these things ever dried up and, you know, I don't know which of these would dry up, right? But there was a time not too long ago, Kevin, you guys were like deeply into to short sales, right? And that eventually went away. And that would have been your other bucket, right? Ben gets a lot of referrals um, in his world. And I'm imagining you guys do down there too in Phoenix, you know, um, so everybody has that other thing, right? Radio and television or whatever that is. But these five can really be done anywhere. And we've done these five, these five in about 26 locations. Now, I think that first slide said Ben has 25. We're at 26 expansion locations around the country. We've leveraged Brivity. Um, we've, we've grown each one of these teams. And these are teams that came to us with their, their own kind of disparate systems and models. And maybe they were good at one of these things, but not at all of them. And one of the ways that Ben, I guess, attracts people into his world is this idea that we don't just say like, hey, come join our team agent, right? And then go do open houses and then work your sphere. We actually give them the plan for that. And Ben calls it, it's kind of the difference between going into a gym, Kevin, and having like a CrossFit membership, right? You walk into the gym, like me, you can tell I don't really walk into the gym, but if I did, I'm like, hey, what does this machine even do? And I do a couple of, a couple of curls or something, and I'm like, ooh, good workout, I'm out of here, I'll see you in three months, right? And a, a lot of us put agents into our business, we don't give them like a, a system or a model to be successful, and they kind of do the gym thing, right? They show up every now and then, and um, they don't really know what to do, and so we have a system and a model for each one of these things, and we use Brivity to kind of be that, you know, that technology leverage behind it. So, and then I'll show you some of this as we go through here, but at all of the kind of tools we've built are around these different ways that Ben's team generates business. So you guys are all doing this, okay? That kind of generate and capture element, maybe even that nurture element is what we're talking about right here, okay? And then this is our brevity world. And, and it's kind of funny, we set out to like simplify this thing, Kevin. This doesn't look more simple. I was gonna say, that. I don't I don't know right. how to break this to you, Bob. <laughs> that, that, um, I'm gonna go ahead and say that it looks like the opposite, opposite of simplicity, um, yeah. but a, I think I hear what you're doing. Here. There's a lot going on, and you guys have really complex businesses, right, Kevin? Like you have a complex business where there's a lot of stuff you could be doing, a lot of stuff going on. This is our world. This is our brevity world. And it all starts kind of right in the middle of that screen with their, their database, right? Their CRM, that, that tool that I have to work all those contacts, those nurtures, those past clients, those people in my world. On the left-hand side is getting people into that CRM. And on the right-hand side is the things we can do then to kind of nurture them, to, to, to drive them towards a transaction, right? Let's get in here and we'll, we'll kind of dive into some of the elements of this. Um, if you were to, to do a demo with us, ultimately become a Brivity client, a full demo, I'm gonna give you guys the highlight demo here, but um, somebody to show you what all these mean, right? They'll show you what you know, valuation websites are and what the search app looks like and um, you know, how do market reports work and you know, what, how do all these things kind of work together? But ultimately, we've got, we've got a message that we want to put in front of people right that one day might be buyers and sellers or hopefully you know sooner rather than later right and if we put the right content message in front we can capture them in some tool some way and it might even be just pulling this bad boy out kevin and typing their name into our app right because we bumped into them at the grocery store but um then we nurture those people right they're in the database we've captured them we nurture them and we're going to nurture buyers one way you know potential sellers are our past clients or our sphere another way right 
with alerts, market reports, auto plans, all these things. And then we'll show you some of these things. And then we get to transactions, like high five. We've got to manage that transaction now. Hopefully we, we have a process or a way that we treat each client that comes into our business. Then high five, right? Like Kevin, we're all shooting for the green box over there, right? Indeed Paycheck. We are. Like high yeah. five, right? Paycheck. And then Kevin knows, we talked about this before we jumped on the call, like he's focused on profit in his business. Like this, that was 2019's focus for you guys was profit, right? We invest some of that profit back. We start the cycle again and we, we do it over and over and over. All right. So let's let's dive in here a little bit, Kevin. So let, let's talk about kind of this first thing, right? Yeah, auto so plans. And uh, auto plans. So first, just high level, like auto plans, Bob, like what are, why do I need an auto plan and, and what is it going to do for me? And then maybe dive into it a little bit. So you need an auto plan because the, you need to follow up with everybody coming into your world really fast. Okay. And, and a lot of times you guys, this, this is a crazy industry we're in. Like it's very rare. I think that Kevin, when a lead comes into your world, you're like sitting there going, okay, when's that bad boy going to show up? Right? I'm just waiting for it, man. I'm like ready to go. I got my phone in hand. I'm ready you're like that. you're 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 showing houses you're at a listing appointment you're doing a cma like you're doing a million things of being a successful agent right and so we needed to be able to respond to our leads immediately no matter where they came from in our world right like, there's a zillow lead a realtor.com lead a lead from our website somebody that came to our open house like it doesn't matter we had to be able to ensure that they were going to get responded to fast so that's the first thing we respond to people fast when we have these plans and they can be triggered automatically. So the way that an auto plan works is it's basically a series of tasks for somebody on your team to do something, the agent to call them, for example, the ISA to call them, uh, your admin to drop something in the mail to them if they're a, a seller lead, right? Well, whatever that task is. And then a series of texts and emails that are gonna follow up that person, right? And this is drip systems. We're not the only people that have these, right? They're out there in a lot of places. Um, we do have triggers that allow these things to be applied automatically to that lead based on where that thing came from and kind of some details of the lead, right? It might be a tag that's on that particular lead or a status that you assign to that lead. It can trigger that plan automatically, okay? So here's where we use this in our business. I'll give you guys a couple examples. So probably our, you know, and, and this isn't, this is something that even predates brevity is a 10 days of pain, right? Ben's had this for a long time and we've adjusted. In fact, uh, in February, Ben and Jolene and I sat down and we created like the 2019 Ben Kinney team, 10 days of pain. And lots of our brevity, you know, our clients now have that thing and are, you know, have it in play in their business. But let, let's do it as if it's a, a website lead, okay? So here's what happens in our world. Website lead comes in, Kevin, and we know is that a buyer lead or a seller lead? Okay, so let's just say it's a buyer lead. It's somebody who's looking at listings on your website, they've done a search, something, that they've registered on the site after doing buyer type activity. When they come into our system, they're gonna get you know, a bunch of kind of things assigned to that lead, right? A source, a status, some tags potentially. So we can set up a trigger that says, anytime I get a new web, new Brivity IDX website lead, right? That's a buyer, it's gonna fire this particular plan. And in Ben's team's case, it's the 10 days of pain. So what happens is about four minutes after that lead comes in, we can set this, we could have made it 30 seconds, we could have made it 15 minutes. We make it four, right? Enough that it kind of feels like somebody could have actually gotten my query and typed out what, what that first thing says, which essentially just, hey, thanks a lot for checking out our website. Uh, you know, people normally check it out because they're thinking about buying. Maybe they have a house that they're interested in, in selling, or sometimes it's because they're thinking about investing in a rental. Which one are you, right? First text, four minutes. If they don't, so if they don't say anything, seven minutes later, we send another text. It says, hey, have you guys figured out which neighborhood would be that perfect neighborhood for you? Then we give them an hour, Kevin. And if they respond to the first text, the second one doesn't go, right? Like this thing's job is to get these leads into a discussion with you, right? Now we have two purposes. We're either trying to get them to respond or sometimes some of our texts are very specifically trying, or emails are trying to set an appointment with them actually. and so. It's either get them to respond or, you know, potentially set an appointment. And so it's, you know, hey, are you thinking about buying, selling, or investing? It's kind of that first text four minutes later. Seven minutes later, we bring them, you know, hey, what neighborhood are you looking to, to, to live in, right? Have you figured that out yet? And then we wait an hour. And an hour later, if they haven't responded to either of those first two texts, we just send another text that says, hey, this is, and we use these placeholders in here, right? So it'll be like lead first name. Hey, this is Jimmy, right? I hope I don't have the wrong number, Jimmy. You were on our website looking at properties. 
we call that our guilt text, right? Like, dude, we just texted you. We give you an hour. You haven't responded. Like you were just on our website, right? And he may not respond then, right? What happens? Well, the agent has a task to call him. And then the next day we're going to send another text and we're going to have a series. And it's funny. We call it the, the 10 days of pain. We've made it even more painful for both the agent and the person receiving it. It's 14 days now. And it just goes through this series, right? We, we'll give this. Any Brevity clients have access because you can share these plans, right? And so, you know, Kevin, you're familiar with R&D, which is not, you know, research and, and develop it, right? It's rip it off and duplicate it from somebody else. Like go and find somebody that's, that has that system in, in their business working well that you'd like to take and just grab it from them. And so we, we share these things and Brevity has an ability for you guys to share your plans all over. And so we've had a really active masterminds group on Facebook where they're in there going, hey, does anybody have like a really great plan for, you know, keeping up with my past clients or a good plan for when I have people coming into my open houses, um, whatever the case is. I'll give you a couple of other tips that we've seen to be highly effective, Kevin, okay, in, in these plans, at least for internet leads, but even open house leads. Um, at about day seven, we just send a text that says, Jimmy, question mark. It's just the lead's name. It's a question. That's it. The whole, entire day, that's all we send that day. Um, ton of response out of that one. Okay. Yeah. The very last text we send says, I love texting you. You hate replying. Now we've sent them like eight, eight or nine texts by this point, like four emails. We've called them four or five times, right? And, you know, assuming the agent's kind of hitting their marks on this plan and, and adhering to our standard, but it's just, I love texting. You hate replying. Just wanted to let you know, we're going to keep following up till we earn your business or hear that your situation has changed. Right, and that's the last thing we send. We set a reminder, or we might put them on a quarterly call plan, or a once a month call plan, or something like that, transitioning off the ten days of pain if they've been totally non-responsive. The funny thing is, people respond to that one, and they just straight tell you they're like, "Ha ha, yeah, totally been ignoring you." We're just not ready, right? And you get that a lot. People are like, "I don't want to bother Kevin. Like, he's probably a really hardworking guy, but but I'm just not ready, right?" And so they're just they put these walls up and. These plans allow us to just kind of chip away, especially in that first 14 days, right? And there's a reason behind why we are really aggressive in those first 10 days, which is essentially uh, the vast majority of people interview one agent and they do it within, they pick who they're going to work with within that first two week window of when they start looking, right? And so yeah. we just, we're aggressive. We let these plans kind of do the work. And here's the deal. If our agents do nothing, they don't call, right? And this happens sometimes, right? You get an agent that's just, they're super busy or whatever. They don't call once. We still get, I think we have 19 texts and email touches in those first 14 days. And three of them, or four of them, one email and three texts happen that first day, right? With the cadence. And we do this what for I, all our plans. What I love about that, Bob, is um, even even if your agent with the, with this brevity plan turned on, uh, with this 10 days of pain or 14 days of pain, rather, as, as it may be now, um, if they didn't make any calls themselves, intervene themselves at all, there's actually more touches happening for them than what's happening with the average real estate lead for the average real estate agent in this country. You, so Brivity with your auto plan is actually reaching out more than most of your competition. I, I put a little chat, uh, quote in the chat box there. This isn't the same thing, but it reminds me of the Warren Buffett quote where he says something to the effect of, if you don't uh, find a way to make money while you sleep, you'll work until you'll die. Meaning you can't do it all right. You have to be able to make money with other than just your personal time. And this is one of those ways to leverage a system, leverage a plan, leverage a technology, leverage the uh, leverage the work that you guys, Ben, and the whole Brivity team has already done for us. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, the, the more efficient you can be, Kevin, right? The, the more time, I mean, in, in our world, a lot of what Ben teaches and trains to is like being more efficient so I can claim back like time with my family, with my friends, like me time, right? Like it's not always about doing another deal. Sometimes it's about claiming that time back to enjoy dinner with your wife at night and not be like, I gotta jump on this phone call and, and call this lead because, right? No, like it's not gonna get responded to otherwise. All right, so this next piece is these open house, it's basically an open house capture tool, Kevin. And we use these, um, all of our agents, look, on Ben's team, when you join one of Ben's teams in any of our 26 locations around the country, uh, you commit to doing two open houses every single week, Kevin, until you get into production. And, and what being in production means is that you've pended two deals two months in a row. We basically make a commitment to every agent that joins our team that 
they're going to do 24 deals at a minimum if they join our team and they kind of do things the Ben Kinney team way. Um, now, once they get to that point, and, and by the way, that's it's work your sphere, and we have a very kind of dedicated way we do that. It's called the sphere and gear. Then it's two open houses every single week, and then it's circle prospecting 150 dials a day. Um, sometimes that's done out of Mojo. Sometimes that's just done into the database using the Brevity Dialer. I'll talk about that in a minute. But that's what people commit to when they join our team. We know if people do those things, at a minimum, they're going to close 24 deals. And we have one agent. He's brand new down in um, Sacramento this year. He's only done this for six months. He's going to close 30 deals this year, Michael Brown. My mom, Kevin, you've heard my mom's story a my bunch. My mom is a rock star, bro. She did 79 transactions her first year, basically on the back of kind of the model of Ben's business, which is work your sphere. And she actually did a really bad job of working her sphere, but two open houses every week, 150 prospecting dials a day, which she hated, by the way, hated it. But she just kind of swallowed her ego and said, look, I don't know, like Ben tell me. And Ben said, this is how we built our business. And so Gail kind of bought in on that. So the open house is one of the ways they do that. They do them a lot. Um, and they're highly effective at the marketing of them. And they have a plan that we've got this whole transaction plan side of the business. I'll show you guys in a little bit where you can say, I, we're going to hold the open house, this listing, apply the plan. And everybody's jobs kind of get, are already laid out for them, right? Everybody knows what's going to happen. The listing agent, the, the open house agent, the, the marketing admin, you know, whoever's jobs, right? But agent shows up now at the open house. And what they do is basically from their website and part of the Brivity platform is you guys have a website. You find that open house that you're at, right? You pull it up on your iPad or your Kindle or your laptop. I guess you could do it on your phone if you want it. I'm going to be handing my phone back and forth to other people. We do it on a stand, right? A $49, $39 stand from Amazon, Kevin. Slap that iPod in it. You know, some of our folks have their stand like chained to the table. So somebody doesn't walk off with it. They come in or whatever, right? But, um, and then when they come in, we got a very specific script we use for open houses, which is a set. And we use the script a lot in our world, by the way, which, but it's it kind of sounds like the first text. It's, hey, people normally come into open house for one of two reasons. Like, you know, they're out trying to find that perfect property or they live in the area and they're wondering what their own home is worth. Which one are you guys, right? You know, I might introduce myself. Hey, I'm Gail or whatever, but. So, so that's, that's the first thing we say. Are you a buyer or are you a seller? From that point, then it's the seller asks, we have everybody check in for security, per, whatever you want to say there, right? Like my mom will turn people away if they're not willing to check in to her, to her, to her deal. I mean, she will literally turn them away. My right. mom's kind of a bulldog, right? But, but so people check in. They'll, they'll check in on this thing, right? What happens here then is lead immediately sent to the CRM, Okay. There's a little checkbox if you look kind of real close on the form in the background. It says, get emailed when similar properties hit the market. So if I was doing an open house on this, this property here in Bellingham at 445000 what it would do is when that lead came in, if they left that thing checked, they'd start getting listings sent to them for other properties in Bellingham similar to that property that they had visited for the open house. We go kind of you know, plus or minus. It's somewhere between 10 and 20% kind of on a sliding scale. Um, and then we kind of round to the nearest... 10,000 numbers and, and they might get a search on this one from between 400 and 490 or something in Bellingham immediately without the agent doing anything. That person just walked in, right? So we're already starting to kind of drip or, or, or nurture that client. But here's the other thing, right? In conjunction with the first tool, right? The plan, my mom, when her open house happens and they come in, that lead now gets sent into the CRM. 80% of them leave that box checked. They start to get listing alerts. Okay, and then she got an open house plan that just triggers automatically based on a new lead coming into the system with the source of open house, right? What, what does that plan look like? Well, two hours after the lead comes in, right? Not four minutes, because I'd still be like showing them the bathroom, Kevin, and they'd be like, why are you texting me? This is weird, right? But two hours later, we send them a text that says, hey, thanks so much for dropping my open house. Did you guys have any questions? Now that you had a little bit of time to think about the house. And sometimes, look, they reply and go, which open house? We were at 10. <laughs> we can say, one, two, three, Main Street, right? The, the, the best one you were at or whatever we say, right? But it gets them into a conversation with us or sometimes they don't reply to that one. The second text we send, guess how many minutes later, Kevin? Seven, right? Seven or eight minutes later. That one says, um, we made a promise to our seller that we would ask every single person that came through if they wanted to make an offer on the house. And I can't remember if we asked you, did you guys want to make an offer on this house? Again, sometimes they go, hey, we're at five. Which one? What? No, we didn't see any. We want to make an offer. Whatever they say, right? Then an hour later, hey, this is Jimmy, right? 
You came to our open house earlier today, Jimmy. I hope I don't have the wrong number. And then it's that it's the same, very similar series to what we use in that 10 days of pain then, right? There's offers in there for things like, um, you know, in Ben's brokerages, they're all Keller Williams. So they have the Keller mortgage. So they talk, they have a piece where they talk about the Keller mortgage, right? Um, Ben's teams are all very geared on having like a discussion with somebody about what home ownership means and, and what the, what the benefits and the value is in that first year. When you look at like appreciation and, and um, interest, mortgage interest deduction and different things. And so they have this very kind of targeted text or email out of there that talks about that. And look, that's going to be valuable to a, an internet lead, an open house lead, right? So we're even R and D in ourselves, Kevin, like we're not smart enough around here to create all these different plans for all these different things. Well, right? just, the, the reality is, is there's, there's genius in the simplicity and most importantly, it's a plan. This isn't any, and I'm sorry for those of you on this call who are not uh, sports fans, but it's like I always say, I actually believe the best coach in football is the coach that gets their teams to buy into their scheme, to their play calling the best. It's not that, hey, this offense is better than that offense or this one's better than that one. It, the best coach is because they get their buyers or their players to buy in all the way. No different than when we can implement fully um, dude, Gail, your mom is a perfect example. You said she's a bulldog. Well, what she is is she's committed. She said, okay, and she got yeah. she 79 deals, I think is what you said it was. Um, she did that because she was committed to following the plan, right? These We're going to go through, uh, I think, like 11 total things here, even though you only promised 10, and she bought into it. To me, that's where it's at. Like that's the, That's the genius is in the simplicity. One of the things we talk about, it, Ben says this all the time, he, I've, he probably, because I, I am this type of person, I'll overcomplicate things. And in my head, it's not to justify my inaction. That's not why I'm doing it. I'm not trying to get to all the details. But the reality is a lot of times we overcomplicate things to justify our inaction, right? Well, well I can't do a plan on my open house because it's got to be perfect. No, it's just got to be. Sometimes it's just got to be. We can, we can tweak to make it perfect, but right now it's just got to be. Right. And, and like a lot, look, they did 2,344 transactions in Ben's world last year. They're going to do over 3,000 this year, Kevin. It's a lot of people, but it's a lot of systems. A lot of times it's just activity, right? And, and some of the activities we can automate. And so we've gotten good at the activities we can automate. Let's automate those. We still make a lot of phone calls, right? We still have to get up and do the open house and kind of do the activities of real estate. But if we can make some of that easier, yeah, when people buy in, you can get your team to buy in when they feel like, wow, like we're doing this across the board, right? So Gail knows that like she's got a plan for her quickly leads. Let's talk about quickly. This is my favorite one, Kevin. So this is our text to lead service. We call it quickly, K-W-K-L-Y. I, I, I don't know why, actually. We, the, ben actually acquired this product from Zillow. Um, Zillow owned this via an acquisition from Market Leader. When we got this product, there had been about 100 clients on this product for five years. Not one had canceled in five years. There are no real estate products out there ever that have like 0% attrition, right? Like, and so we were like, what's the deal with this? And, and Ben kind of bought it without really understanding maybe the full power of it. But essentially what it is, is it's a way for people to text in and, and then query information from your MLS. We hook into your MLS, we give you a keyword. So Ben's is Ben Kinney, right? Tim Hiles is value. Um, you know, somebody else's is sold or whatever your keyword is, right? You get to pick your own keyword. And then you, you get a sign made, right? Kevin, right? We don't do, we don't do flyers anymore. We have a sign and the sign might say, you know, to get the current price and all the photos, text Ben Kinney to 59559. So Kevin, I can remember, and you probably have a similar memory of something like this. So you've been doing this a long time. I can remember when Bill Gates first registered on my website. So I, I, we did real estate in Bellevue in the early 2000s, right? Bellevue, Washington, right next to Redmond. And I can vividly remember, you know, Jonathan, I run into Jonathan Washburn's office. I'm like, John, hey, Bill Gates, dude, like, check it out. He's he just, and John's like, you moron, I'm like, get out of here. Like, it's not Bill Gates. He's like, well, he's going to register on our website a hundred more times. I promise you. And I'm like, what? Like, I didn't know, right? This is the beginning of like internet lead generation. And we're right there. I thought, why wouldn't he? Right. So, and it wasn't him, right? It was a fake number. And look, Mickey Mouse, Donald Duck, F you, Bill Gates, like you guys probably get whoever your famous people are down there in Phoenix, right? Like um, we've never gotten a fake quickly lead ever, 
right? Because the person that starts that query and says, yeah, I want to know, I want the photos of that house. I want to know how much that house is priced for, or yeah, I want to know what my house is worth or whatever our call to action is, right? We can, we can capture the number. Like they did it hundred percent every time. So, so you, you can have your sign made. Now there's a whole bunch of different ways. There's a way you can put this on Zillow and put this to play on Zillow. And I thought that's crazy. That'll never work. And the first guy that told me he's going to do it, I'm like, you're a moron. People don't go on Zillow and then leave there and go text. But if you give the right call to action, something like to contact the listing agent directly, text, Ben Kenny to 59559, what you'll find is they were on Zillow before and when they hit that button and the person called them and they were like, hey, are you the listing agent? And the guy was like, no, no, I'm the preferred agent with Zillow, right? They were like, I just want to talk to the listing agent. And then they might text. So um, we, we generate a bunch of, my mom converts in the first 30 days, one in 13 to a real buyer or seller. Now she doesn't sell them a house or go list their house in the first 30 days. But she she gets one out of every 13 people to like commit to working with her in those first 30 days after she's generated them as a quick lead. And some of those 13 become a client later down the road, right? But these are, they're really valuable leads. And what do we do, right? The lead drive, drive by our sign, they text Ben Kenny to 59559, lead comes in. We can shotgun these out to multiple agents. If you have a team where like, Kevin, you guys have a team and you might have five different agents have listings at any given time. We can make sure the right agent gets the lead on the right listing because we have that feed to the MLS to tell who the listing agent is. So um, quickly is my absolute favorite. I spent about the first six months we own this product just digging in and diving in and seeing why did those hundred clients like stick with this thing for a number of years. Um, There's a whole nother side of quickly. Okay. So we've got this kind of we tie into your MLS and you get this keyword that people can then query properties via text. But there's another side where we basically will give you any keyword you want and then you control what the response is. Okay. So, so we use those like on our just sold postcards right now, right? It used to be, um, Hey, we sold your neighbor's house, which means your house, your, your equity has changed, right? Go to, you know, sell sold in fairhaven.com or, or something, right? Today we have them text BK value. Because if they just gold sold in fairhaven.com and then they go, yeah, I'm out of here. We don't. But if they text BK value, now we just send them back the link to, to sold in fairhaven.com. If they go there or not, doesn't matter. We have their cell phone number of somebody that took action on our keyword, right? So it, it, you, ever, you guys do any events, Kevin? You ever kind of like go out into the public? So yeah, we do. Sure, absolutely. So we do. Um, we, we've really the last like year and a half, we've done a bunch of bridal shows and they're really big in May. So this May, a lot of our teams will do, will do bridal shows. Okay. We'll, um, the Ben Kinney teams. The first one to do this was Laura down in Midland. Here's what she did. She gave away a pair of Christian Louboutin shoes. Okay. At her booth. And she, she had everybody text red bottoms and Kevin, you just like flip flops. But if you like shoes, you'd know that Christian Louboutin is really expensive and they all have red bottoms. Okay. So you text red bottoms to five, nine, five, five, nine to win these shoes. And she had them on display at her, at her booth at the at the wedding show, right? So as people come by, look, people don't want to stop at your booth. Like not very many people are gonna stop at a real estate agent's booth and go, hey, what's going on here? Like, talk to me, sell me something, right? Like, you guys got any houses? Like, that's just but they don't want to win something, right? And like almost everybody that walked through that place wanted to win her Louboutin. Say I'll text the red bottoms. So we just send them back a form that basically says to you know to win the shoes, complete this form, right? Name, email, phone number, physical address, and then some real estate questions. Are you and your future spouse going to buy a house together in your first year of marriage? Yes or no? Do either one of you currently own a home and you'd be interested in what it's worth today? Yes or no? Right? If yes, address. Right? Well, we already have their address. We don't even need to do that. Um, we'll do one. Have you considered, or like, do you currently own or have you considered any real estate investments to help you build wealth? Right? And then a lot, oftentimes we'll ask the last question. Have you ever considered a career in real estate? We just hit a buyer, seller, investor, career in real estate, right? Those are what we're going after all day, every day as somebody that wants to buy, sell, invest, or come work with us. So think about it. We have 500 people that come to the wedding expo, right? 350 of them go, I want to win something, right? 200 of them go, I'm willing to fill this whole thing out to win that something. Guess what? The other 150, we have their phone number. We just call them on Monday and say, hey, you texted in to win the shoes, but you never gave us your information. Right? Can we get your get your information? Because we're gonna draw for those red bottoms on, on Friday. 
But 150 people give the information and then let's say, you know, even if it's 15 or 18, give some positive answer to that question. She was out, the money for the photo booth, or for the booth, 500 bucks, right? The money for the Louboutins, 500 bucks, right? She adds 200 people to her database and 18 like ready to go now types. What we started to do is bring our lender in, they pay for our booth now. Couldn't right. we do that with some like less expensive shoes? Like some yeah. dude, yeah, rainbows are 40 flops. bucks, 40 yeah. bucks for a pair of rainbows. Be giving out flip flops every day of the week. You could have oh, a Lord. text flip flops to five, nine, five, five, nine to get your pair. Right. So yes. there, it, listen, if you do marketing in the physical world, it can be enhanced with a call to action. That's text based, right? It could be a phone call. You could have them call you. You could have them go to a website. You could have them do a QR code, which please don't because you don't know who shot that QR code. Right, or you can have them text, and then when you they text you, we capture their number. I love quickly. I, I can talk for an hour just about quickly. There's so many cool things you can do with it. So these are some of some of the tools we have, Kevin. Right, we've got you know open house forms. We talked about the website. We've got quickly. There's some valuation pages. We've got all these kind of ways to capture them, but it doesn't have to just be our stuff, right? We can bring your stuff in from wherever it's at, Kevin. You guys do marketing that's not to your website. You got Realtor.com, Zillow, any of that stuff even listings to leads like somewhere right and if you're not somebody on this call is we'll get your leads from wherever they're at we'll get them funneling into brevity okay and then you can have your plans apply right we got our realtor.com leads coming into brevity and we've got a version of the 10 days of pain that's that's specific to realtor.com it doesn't say hey thanks for checking out our website it says we are the preferred agent for realtor.com here in bellingham love it all right uh the brevity dialer so it's not, it's not, we still use Mojo, right? To power dial people that aren't in our database. Ben has this thing about lists and leads, right? We just go get a list of, you know, 300 people that live around our open house this weekend. Those aren't leads in our business. There's people we're going to prospect to. When, when we talk to them, they agree to let us send them a market report. Then we might bring them into the database. But we, we keep our, our lists and our leads separate. But inside of Brevity, a lot of our teams, and I bet a lot of these teams, you got a bunch of leads. You got old leads, you got new leads, you got past clients you haven't called in way longer than you know you want to, right? You've got Sphere you haven't talked to oh, yeah. in two years or five years. Or I don't even know why you're calling them Sphere anymore, right? Like, True. So we have this dialer. We just created this dialer, and basically you can go into Brevity, identify a set of people. Let's say I was going to identify, I wanted to, to put my, my kind of index, right, in order by to put all my past clients and put them in order by the one I haven't talked to in the longest. Okay. I can just okay. start a dialer session with them. Then I can just say, all right, I'm, I'm called today's past client day, Kevin, right? Kevin, you owe me a call, man. I'm one of your past clients. I bought and sold with Kevin Kaufman and Fred Weaver, right? He owes me a call. So he's going to get into brevity today. He's going to fire it up, put it in order. Be like, all right, I haven't talked to Bob in six months or whatever. Right. He's going to start that call session. It's just going to call Kevin once he's going to throw his headphones in. And then it's going to call the first person in that list. And Kevin's going to be able to look at his info, right? I mean, it's very similar to Mojo there. He's just going to next, right? Take some time after that call, put his notes in, what happened? Call the next guy. And it's just going to call through that list. Kevin's going to record all those calls to the CRM, right? So that a month from now, I hope it's not four months from now, Kevin, when you come back in there to call your past clients again, right? It's all right. Who hadn't been called in the longest now? Put them in order. Get to work, right? This is, this is kind of where like, technology meets action right it's like i could get into my crm and all you guys i bet every single person on this call look look every agent on ben's team today every single one has calls they could make today in their crm and if they could make them you know 75 percent faster why, why wouldn't you want to you know i think some of the some of the thing is uh bob a lot of us like we know we should call or we want to call and we don't want to just call to ask for business. Um, yeah. we, well, it's like we need a reason to call, which, uh, totally. you know, I know that was always a big deal for me. It's like I felt like I had to have a reason. Maybe something like, one. do you guys have tools uh, as well, like that could be a reason for me to be making those phone calls? Yeah, 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 let's see. Ah, did you know? I didn't even give you this presentation. I might have given you some bullet points, right? I, I, mean, might, have, those, I, might, I might be somewhat familiar with what you guys offer. This is one of those 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 tools, right? The market report. So my mom, Kevin, we talked about our 79 transactions her first year. Uh, she didn't call any of her past clients that whole year. Like she was just looking for that next deal, right? Like she kind of left out the work your sphere and past clients part. She really just focused on prospecting and open houses where most of her business came from, 
Um, she sucked at her at her sphere and her past clients. So it was a whole year, and then she said, "Ah, I got I got to use this tool." And so she finally like went in just over the course of a couple of days, like set everybody up on a market report. And here and it's it's simple, right? It's basically like we go in there, we tell the system like where do they live, right? And then we have your your data from your MLS because we have a website feed for you that has all the properties, actives, pendings, and solds. And then we just start sending your clients anything currently active around their house anything currently pending, and then we show them everything that's sold around them in the last 30 days. We show, show them what it sold for, what it listed for, then go see all the pictures. And and what, so Ben's teams use this as a script often to call their people and follow up with them, right? Hey, I saw that you guys looked at your market report last month or last week or yesterday, right? Did you guys see that house? I know that, look, we just got bought you guys, you guys just bought two years ago. But my my job is to help you kind of protect your wealth in real estate. And, and, and sometimes even to just let you know like things are good right now, right? Did you guys see that house down the way that sold for, you know, 385? Like, holy cow, we helped you guys buy two years ago for what, 290, right? Like, wow, things are doing well in Parkwood Ranch down there in, in Mesa, Arizona, where Kevin helped me buy, right? Like, um, these things, they get the highest open rate of anything we've ever sent in real estate, Kevin. I've been, we've been sending stuff for 19 years to people. I've been doing this since 2000. These get almost a 40% open rate, which it makes a lot of sense, right? Most of these are going to our past clients, our sphere, people that know us. But we see people like looking at these sometimes almost every day, right? The fact Zillow exists is proof that like your customer wants this information, Kevin, right? Yep. Like, it's just like, they're going to get it somewhere. Look, Ben tells this ridiculous story. He's not even married. So the story is kind of weird for him. I am married. And my wife, you've met her, Kevin. She's amazing. Like, I don't know how I got this lady to marry me. She's a 10. She's way out of your league, bro. She's way out of your league. I, yeah, I'm a solid four, but I'm a four. Okay. Yep. And so when she comes home from work tomorrow, tonight, right, I'm not going to be like, hey, honey, guess what? I got you this thing. It's called speed dating, honey. You're going to go. There's going to be 50 eligible bachelors. They're all going to be really good looking like Kevin, like the square jaw types and just, you know, wow. really good looking tans. I'm pasty. Like you can tell I'm really pasty. I had a lady yesterday asked me if I was sick because I was so pasty, right? They're going to have huge wallets, honey. Like they're going to sit like this because their wallets are so fat. They can't even sit straight, right? And you're going to, you're going to find somebody amazing. Like go do that, honey. It'll be great. I'm not, Kevin, are you doing that to your wife when she comes home? To, like, no, that's no. insane. Right. No. But here's the deal, though. It, it, when your client drives home from work tonight, Kevin, if they drive into Parkwood Ranch where I live and I've seen that house on the corner with the sign on it. Right. I know it's listed at 275 because I ran out of the cover of darkness and I snaked one of their flyers out of there. Right. If they had quickly, I would have had to give them my cell number, but I snaked their flyer. So I know it's listed at 275. I'm driving home today and I pull in. If there's a sold sign on that thing. I'm not even going to get in my garage, Kevin. Like I'm going to pull over on the side of the road. I'm going to pull this thing out and I got to go somewhere. That somewhere better be with you, Kevin, right? If yep. it's not with you, it's Zillow, it's Redfin, it's Google. Like God forbid they end up in Ben Kinney's database, right? The agent with like 10 marketing photos and like the big, huge marketing wallet. Like they're going to go after him really aggressively, right? So we want to build a moat around our past clients a lot of times we get seller leads in our world and they go, oh, we're, we were just curious. But they're not looking to sell today. They just wanted to know what their house is worth to like put it on their spreadsheet for their net worth, right? Because they're on Ben Kinney's masterclass and they track it every month, right? But, but they're going to sell statistically in the next seven years. So my mom, <laughs> she's like our biggest fan, obviously, right? But she goes into the masterminds group, our Brevity masterminds group, like, once a month, she gets a come list me type response to one of her market reports. And here's the thing. I think we, like, I, I don't know about, I think I would give a lot of people like less credit than they deserve for them being able to understand the value of their biggest asset. If you're sending people these right now, Kevin, and they have a number on them, I think your house is worth 275, 284. Guess what? They don't think it's worth that, right? Like the chances they think it's worth exactly the number you put in front of them are really low. So we just give them the data. We just say, look, right here, here's what's selling around you. Over time, you'll get an idea of what your house is worth. And Kevin, you were talking about like, what's well, a good conversation? Maybe a good conversation is to call them and tell them to pay attention to things like price per square foot when they're looking at sold listings, right? Like you guys know how to educate your client, but this is a great thing to call. We probably do 
So we try to call our sphere once a month and we don't always do it, right? Um, but we, two of our yearly calls are based around the market report, right? And sometimes it's more, we get somebody that's like aggressively looking and we can see when they're looking at these things. Um, we, we might call them more often because they're showing some kind of interest or maybe they looked, then they don't look for six months, then they look like three or four times over the course of a week. You're like, what are these people doing? Like something real estate is on the brain, right? We gotta get after them. And you've got all the tools in your CRM back there to see who's been looking at my market reports most recently, right? So you, two, here's another thing real quick. You, you hit me with, oh, you go ahead. Hit, sorry, this was like just a revelation for me personally. Like, so two of the phone calls a year are specifically around the market report. Yeah. Wow, okay, that's huge. That to me that that's huge. That's that takes out to the phone. Wow. Um, I I, I agree. Other. You know what? It is that important though because I I that that's the thing that people are opening the most. And if that's the case, then yeah, I guess it only makes sense. We should be calling them the most on that topic. It's by a large margin, Kevin. Like it, it's it's like three x over what you see on like listing alerts getting open, right? I, I mean it's. It blows away any emails we send out of our drip plans, the, whatever those things might be. And by the way, we don't really do those kind of emails anymore outside of that first 14 days. Like we let things like the market report be that drip mechanism that keeps us in front of our clients. Think about this. So they do, we do these every two weeks. We send them out every two weeks. Now the market report itself is living and breathing. Whenever they go access it and pull it up, it's live data from like right that second. So if I send it to them a week ago, and then two days after I send it to them, they drive into their neighborhood and they see the sold. They can go pull that market report up that I sent them a week, you know, two days prior to that. And it will have it on there as a sold as long as it's sold in the MLS. Very cool. So um, we send them every two weeks. So we get 26 very specific touches to our sphere and our past clients that's particular to them. That's information they want. It's not like change of clocks. It's not, you know, daylight saving time. It's... It's not that stuff, right? It's, it's market data because that's who we are. We're real estate agents, right? We want, we want to get them like information they want that, that makes them think about us when they think about the value of their house. So yeah, these things are amazing. I love them. This has a CMA tool as well. There's a whole CMA tool where we, we've got your data and you can go do a CMA. I don't even have that on here, but there is a CMA tool. It's pretty slick. Um, all right, Kevin. Hopefully, mm -hmm. right, eventually we're going we're gonna to have more business. <laughs> right. We're going to have to figure out how to manage a large volume of transactions someday. That's everybody's goal, right? Great problem to have. Exactly ben the problem. Realized, yeah, exactly the problem we're looking to, to. Ben managed 900 transactions in Washington State last year. Ben didn't. Um, um, Christina did. What, one lady. Did. Now, she had, VA, she had VA support that she would bring in and out, right, as – Things piled up, which when you're managing 900 transactions in a year, 900 pendings, we have another lady that managed 900 listings, right? So we have a listing manager, we have a pending manager, and it wasn't 900, 750 listings or something like that that she managed throughout the course of the year. They do it because they have a system for how they do transactions. So you can build plans inside of a brevity, not just for people, right? And how we drip on and try to convert leads or how we, we choose to follow up with our sphere, our past clients. Those can all be people plans. We have transaction plans as well. So inside of these transaction auto plans, you've got kind of a couple of elements. There, there's this task concept that says, look, every time you take a listing, Kevin, there's a hundred things you guys do. And for most of your listings, it's the same hundred things, right? But it's not just doing those things. It's actually communicating those things back to the client. And Ben originally built Brevity seven years ago for this specific purpose. So there's a thing called the NAR Home Buyer and Seller Survey. You probably read it every year they put this thing out. Your NAR dollars go to it, Kevin. Ben's been a student of this thing for years. And one of the, one of the kind of things that's been said in that year after year is like when, when sellers are asked, like, what could your agent have done better? Like communication is, is always very high on that list, right? Like I... Yeah, our house got sold, but I don't really know what they did to get it sold, right? Like we kind of go out there, we take the listing, we make all these promises, like we're gonna do all these things to get your house sold. And then it's like, all they really see is like the sign in the yard, right? Or maybe they know we did an open house that, but we basically, every, every single step of the transaction, we communicate it, what we're doing back to the client. So it's a task that comes up for somebody. Let's say it's order the sign, right? We've even like, Look, your people don't, or most most clients, I don't know we order this. The sign just shows up, they see it out there, 
right? We let them know, like, we, we, you know, we did the sign design. We approved the sign design. We ordered the sign. The sign was delivered. Like, we're letting them know every step along the way. And it's just a simple, like, when our person goes and orders the sign, they just, they just check a couple of things, right? The client then each day, they get kind of an update of what did we do today to sell your house? And that includes, it's really easy to show them the marketing, show them the property on Zillow or Truly or Realtor.com or the 15 other sites, you know, the, your, all your competitors that it's on. Go ahead, you were gonna ask. Yeah, I would say this, this is so valuable to just constantly remind people. It's easy because as professionals, as people who do this every single day, we even forget or overlook the things that we do to earn that money to earn the yeah. commission from the sale. And so we need to remind folks sometimes, it's not rubbing it in their face, it's just reminding them of like, hey, I am working, like we all know, we put our blood, sweat and tears into these transactions. And all it's doing is it's slowing us down. Well, we don't even have to slow down. Ben slowed down to build it, Ben, Bob did, you, your team built it. And now we can just remind our clients like, hey, all these things are happening, because they forget, they don't realize that there's 180 different things that happen from the day we sign paperwork to the day we close. And a lot of this, that communication element can actually be automated. So oh. th there's a whole series of like, you can automate text and emails to either come from or go to certain roles in the transaction. I'll give you an example of a couple like ones we have automated that are just kind of really simple, right? Like a one week before a listing is set to expire, we have a text message that goes from the listing, the listing manager to the listing agent an automated text that just says, hey, just a reminder, in one week, your listing at 123 Main Street is set to expire, right? And that's just a simple thing. Other things like, you know, we'll automate the communication the day before the inspection to make sure the client remembers they have an inspection tomorrow. So there's this automated email that goes out from the listing manager to the client, right? To the buyer, the, to the seller, right? They say, hey, you got your inspection tomorrow, don't forget, you know, here's the inspector's information. So we can like, build these emails, these templates using placeholders for things like dates and roles. And we can automate a lot of the communication that I bet that some of your admins, they do the same email every, every time. It's totally. the same one that they send to the client and they just go in, they've got a template for it. They just change the date, right? Or they change the name of the inspector or the loan officer or whatever it is. We can automate a bunch of these things. And so we've we probably, we've, you know, Ben says 50%. Like we, we've clawed back 50% of our admin's time. Not just when I poured into more transactions that we're able to do, right? But as Ben's business has grown, it hasn't been this thing where he's bringing on additional expenses, right? He's not, he kind of, the MREA model would say first admin, second admin, Kevin. And Ben did first admin technology. Like he just realized early on, like I don't want that additional expense because second admin becomes third, becomes fourth when you scale a massive business. And he said, I got to figure out a way to make my admins more effective, right? Um, you can do things like instructions and notes and all these things. And so I, Christina didn't, oh yeah, last year she did. Last year she managed 900. Guess what, Kevin? In, in April of this year, Christina's dad um, got like a debilitating disease. She had to leave. She left our world and we're prepared for this. She left. The next day, and we knew this was coming, right? We had a week uh, before she, the next day, like somebody else was able to step in. We were able to just kind of move people around, come into her world and it was chaotic. Don't get me wrong, okay? <laughs> but everything that needed to be done was detailed out and in front of somebody, including the instructions. Ben has this philosophy that everybody's trying to replace themselves if they want the next opportunity in our organization. So when we build our plans out on a transaction, it's not just go order the sign. It's order the sign, we do it here, here's the login, right? Here's the link, here's the password, and right? And like the instructions on how to do everything can be there as well, not just what do we do. What we do is, is kind of a lot, and then your people get used to it. They don't need the instructions anymore, but guess what? Someday somebody might need those instructions. Totally. Right? That's how you build a big business is you put these systems in place that say, we can grow, we can scale, and we can move people in and out, right? I mean, some businesses, if, if a key employee like Christina had to step away for a little while, it would devastate. Like they might not get back on track, right? You might lose transactions because of that. Things will fall through the cracks. Not in a business that's built around systems and models and leveraging a technology that's, that's kind of the same thing. All right, so you, know, you get listings, right? We have these, these AI targeted postcards. 
So you basically go in, you design a template. Every time you get a new uh, just listed, it, it goes out. Now you got to approve it, right? Kevin, you might be like, I don't want to send the postcard on the just listed lot that we just took in, you know, in Mesa, right? But I do it on this place in Scottsdale. And, and it's just like a simple, you just go, yeah, go. And you've built the template. Uh, we, we, we pull in all the information from the MLS. Postcard goes out to a predetermined number of people. You might say, I want to send it every time we get one to 300 homes. Now, we don't just send it to the 300 nearest houses right around your listing, right? We've got some, you know, an algorithm or whatever, right? It goes out and looks at data and it says, let's send this postcard to the houses most like the one Kevin just listed, right? Let's send it to a bunch of other three bed, two baths, you know, in that price range there in Mesa. Same that's, thing on just sold. So that's smart. Right now yeah. it does just listed and just solds. Yeah. Right. Let's get you a little bit more kind of value for your dollar. Let's put your message in front of similar owners. Right. If you guys just sold something, wouldn't you rather the people that have that exact kind of house or that very similar kind of house know you just sold it for 285? Of course. The answer is yes. Right. I love that one. It's it just it, it can be another thing that we can potentially take off of the plate of your admin, right? Even that, you know, however they go about initiating that request to the postcard company or, or whatever it is. We do leads. Okay, I don't know. A lot of people do leads. Here's one thing I'll tell you about leads. Um, we don't do them any different than anybody else. Okay, so if you thought the leads sucked last time, you probably they're gonna suck this time. It's not the leads, unfortunately, Kevin. Right, like we don't have some secret pool of buyers on the internet somewhere that nobody else knows about. We're all doing these from the same places, right? It's Google, it's Facebook, it's app networks. Right? Our guys are really good at it. Grant's been doing it since before there was a Google, right? He did it when it was Overture back in the day, Kevin. I don't know if you remember those days when you could feed stuff into like Yahoo from a thing called Overture. So we've been doing this a long time. Um, there's no contracts, right? We just, we take a budget from you. We go out and spend those dollars on your behalf. Um, and, and try to generate leads. We do buyer leads or we can do seller leads, um, either one. All right, you need to be on the go, right? I mean, most of you, half of you guys are probably like listening to this on the go, right? All of you guys have this thing in your hands somewhere in your pocket or within arm's reach, right? You gotta be able to, to, to like, here, here's, here's what it is, Kevin. You're at your open house right now, right? Lead comes in, plan kicks off. All of a sudden that person starts texting back on that plan. You gotta be able to get on that app and have that conversation with them, right? You bump into somebody at the your BNI meeting or whatever, and they're like, yeah, hey, give me, you gotta get them into the, the database. Kevin, have you ever like taken somebody's name and phone number and it just ended up like under your car seat? No, never, right? I mean, I've, I've never had that happen, right? never, never. Never had a business card that like you found it six months later, like, oh shit. Did yeah, you mean today? To Did you mean today? <laughs> <laughs> Right? I mean, you got to have that, that, you know, your database has to move with you, right? It can't always be at the end of a computer. So we let your database move with you. I'm going to finish with this one. We have two minutes. I'll take any questions anybody's asked. Custom websites. And look, in some ways, this is, I don't know, like 2005, right? Like website. But here's the deal, Kevin. I still believe this today, okay? Um, your website for most people, unless you knew them already, right? And Kevin, like you guys are gonna do business this year with a bunch of people you know already, okay? But your growth is generally going to be experienced with people you don't know already. And that could be a referral from another client. I had a guy at a, at a, a thing uh, six months ago say to me like, what does my website matter? Like my business is all referral based. And I said, look, how many referrals did you get from your past clients this year, your sphere? He said, I got 22 referrals. And I said, how do you know it wasn't 30 referrals, but only 22 of them decided to pick you after they went and looked at your shitty website? And he was like, God dang, I never thought about that. Because what they do, like even when you get a referral, somebody goes online, right? And they look for you. And when they see you, they better see like an experience that makes them feel like this person can, can handle me, right? Like they can manage my... Like they have a website that looks like it's not from 2005, right? Like they, they've got, there's something to having that element of, of your brand represented online. Now, um, look, there's lots of places for you to get a website. I think we do them really well. And one of the things that's, that's kind of well done about them is you can make these look however you want, right? As long as you can like drag and drop, you can build a website that's totally custom and unique and different from, from anybody else. 
Okay. If you knew HTML and CSS, which I don't like, and I don't expect many people on here do, but maybe your kid does or something, right? Like you can make it look like Zillow today and Redfin tomorrow if you wanted to. That might not actually be a bad idea, Kevin. Those guys spend a lot of money kind of researching what their sites look like for optimization, right? Um, but you can make it look however you want, right? We suggest that you make it kind of represent your brand, whatever that is. This is Travis Bard down in Prescott, your neck of the woods. Like if you've ever met Travis, I don't know if you know Travis Bard. The dude Travis looks, that's well. not him on the horse, but it kind of looks like him. It might as well be Travis on that horse, yeah. Yeah, he probably got a cowboy hat on half the time you'd see him. He's definitely got a big belt buckle. Like that's him. It represents his brand. It's who he is. This one here is Ryan Young, and this is going to go through. Um, so Ryan came to us a while back, and what had been happening, he's in Cleveland. Then a lot of these instant offer type companies, you know, Open Door and, and Zillow's doing it now. These instant offer places, right? We'll, we'll make you an offer on your house right away. And so Ryan said, look, this is like, I need, to, I need to be able to offer this as well. And so he went out and partnered with one of those places. It might have been Open Door. I don't know who he partnered with, right? To be able to give his clients the ability to get an instant offer. But he wanted to build that into his website. And so you can see here, we built this whole kind of stress-free way of selling a home and this whole like instant offer. And there's a video on there. And here's some of the houses they've sold via an instant offer. And here's a traditional sale versus an instant offer. And he wanted his brand to be able to, to kind of represent the fact that, hey, they do this too, right? You, you don't have to not work with the Ryan Young team because you want to sell your house fast and get an offer today. We can do that for you. Right. So whatever that thing is in your business, like we can help you get your website to represent that thing so that when people do go online and they come across you, look, I promise you, like if your website is busted, right, and there's not there's not a good representation of who you are, you're potentially losing business. You might not even know it. Right. That guy, like I don't think he'd ever considered that there might have been 25 people that got referred to him, but only 22 ended up with him because he kind of had a look on his face like. I never thought about it that way, you know? He's like, I just thought my business came. Like, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. So custom websites, that's the last one, buddy. What do you think? Dude, you hit a solid, solid, solid list of things here. I feel like January is going to be an awesome month for you guys. Get in there. I'd love to be a part of it. Love to help you guys kind of take advantage of, of really, look, um, systems and models. Like I, I'm just an ordinary guy. Kevin, you're a pretty ordinary dude. I know you. Ben's an ordinary guy, right? Like you guys are building big businesses on the backs of systems and models. And um, look, every one of you guys are going to be able to build a, a business to some place. I promise you're going to stall out. And it's either a system and a model or a person that you need in your world. Um, let us help you be that system and model. Kevin, get out of here, buddy. Um, Man, I'm so jealous. You're down there. It's like raining here right now. I'm just envisioning outside of your place. It's probably 75 or 77. You oh can see the God. sunshine through that window, right? <laughs> right. I miss, I miss, uh, I miss golf this time of year down there. All right, buddy. I appreciate right, it, man. man. We'll, we'll talk Thank to you guys soon. Talk to you soon, Next guys. Next level, one. See you. Bye, everybody.